I've got a question for you. Can a bullet be overstabilized? Now, it's not a trick question. It's a question that's going to require some critical thinking and a true fundamental understanding of exterior ballistics. Well, the answer is no. A bullet cannot be overstabilized. Stabilization is a binary term. It's sort of like being alive. You're either alive or dead. You can't be over alive and you can't be over dead. The effects that a lot of people call overstabilization is actually correctly called overspun or overspinning a bullet. Let me explain. In an upcoming video, we're going to be talking a lot more about bullets as part of my extreme reloading series, and we're getting to the point of working with bullets. But um, today's uh, episode or today's video is going to be focused on gyroscopic stability, and, uh, and, and that's really what we need to understand when we talk about spin, overspin, and stabilization. Now here is a 168 grain bullet. It is a spear gold dot for the 308 uh, caliber rifles. I loaded this in a 308 Winchester. And all by itself, this bullet is not stable. Right? The only effect that occurred um, or, or took place acted upon that bullet when it was free to move was the effect of gravity. It fell straight down to the ground. Now a bullet can be stabilized, or a projectile I should say, can be stabilized in, well there's really three dif different ways, but as far as we're concerned, uh, we'll talk about two different ways that a projectile can be stabilized in air. We're familiar with both of these. One is through fins, and think about the uh, rockets, uh, the lunar rockets and missiles and so on and so forth. They stabilize, most of those stabilize by fins. And the second way, in the world of rifles, handguns, and those sorts of things, firearms, those bullets, projectiles, are stabilized by spin. Now, it's the amount of spin that gets put on to a bullet that causes that bullet to be stabilized or not stabilized, unstable. And the, way that, the best way to think about this is the rate of spin or the twist rate given uh, to that bullet imparted to that bullet through the rifle's uh, barrel, okay, or the rifling itself. So you may be aware that there are some pretty common uh, twist rates used by various different calibers or cartridges. One of those cartridges that a lot of people are familiar with is the 223 Remington or 556 NATO, and uh, one of the common uh, twist rates for that is about a 1 in 7 or 1 in 8 twist rate. In other words, the projectile will make one complete revolution in 7, 7 or 8 inches along the length of the barrel. Now the 223 Remington 556 uses a 0.224 bullet. That's the actual size of the bullet. That's the actual size of the of the barrel or the bore between the grooves, between the groups. 0.224. And here is an example of a 224 bullet that I like to use for my 556 uh, IWI Tavor really shoots this bullet quite nicely. It is the 69 grain match burner 
by Barnes. Really does work out really, really well for me, but I digress. You may have also heard about another uh, round, kind of an older cartridge in today's world, but made very famous uh, some years ago, quite a number of years ago, uh, for varmint shooting. And, and the reason why it became so famous was because this bullet um, exceeded at the muzzle pretty easily, exceeded 4,000 feet per second. I have one of these, and it is the 220 Swift. Um, I have one of these in a Ruger number no. one. I really like that, uh, that cartridge. And it does exit the muzzle at 4,230 some feet per second, pretty darn routinely. Uh, do some good reloading with that. But again, I digress. Now, the 220 Swift uses commonly a bullet like this one. This is a 40 grain bullet. Happens to be a Winchester Combined Technologies. Winchester and Nossler teamed up on this one. 40 grain bullet. That's also a 0 0.224 bullet. Same caliber. The twist rate, our standard twist rate on a 220 Swift uh, rifle, 1 in 14. 1 in 14. It's a much slower twist rate compared to the 556 or 223 Remington at 1 in 7, sometimes 1 in 8. Now you might be thinking, hold on, why do you have that hugely different twist rate for the same 224 bullet? And I should note that both the 220 Swift and the 40 grain bullet, as well as the 556 and that 69 or 70 grain bullet, those bullets are both stabilized, beautifully stabilized, really precise uh, bullets. Really, they are. Well, how does that work then? The difference is that the 220 Swift was designed, its barrel and its rifling, its twist rate was designed to shoot these light and, more importantly, short bullets. The 556, 223, on the other hand, was designed to shoot these heavier, uh, or relatively heavier, but more importantly, longer bullets. You know, years ago, the 223 was actually uh, very commonly using a 1 in 9 or so twist rate, and it was designed to shoot those 55 grain bullets that are still really, really common. But what has happened over the years is that uh, there was a need for heavier bullets to be shot in that same cartridge. And so manufacturers said, well, the only way we can shoot those uh, heavier, longer bullets is to change the rate of twist. And so now to, uh, in today's world, most of those 5.56, 223 uh, rifles are uh, using a 1 in 7 and sometimes still a 1 in 8 rate of twist. Now, what would happen if I worked up a load for my 556 using this 40 grain bullet? Well, I've done it. It can be done. Uh, and the bullet is definitely stabilized. However, it doesn't shoot very well. In other words, I have a fairly high amount of dispersion, low precision. Um, and why is that? The bullet's stabilized. Yes, it is stabilized. No arguing about that. But the bullet is overspun. Not overstabilized. It's overspun. Now, similarly, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've done a lot of work uh, with my Ruger Precision Rifle and the 168 grain bullets, again, like this Spear Gold Dot. And actually, I've done a lot more with this 168 grain 
Bullet, the Sierra Tipped Match King. My Ruger Precision Rifle really likes this bullet. It shoots really, really well. Now, more recently, I purchased a Barrett MRAD in 300 PRC. Now, the 308 Winchester uses a 308 diameter bullet, and the 300 PRC uses a 308 diameter bullet. What would happen if I loaded this 168 grain bullet, worked up a load in, for this, in that 300 PRC? Well, I could stabilize it, no doubt about it. I could easily stabilize it, but I am certain, and I've seen some other people uh, talk about this, very disappointed in the results because the dispersion is terrible. It doesn't shoot anywhere near as well as the much heavier and longer 225 grain bullets or 220 grain bullets that that 300 PRC was designed for. That cartridge, each cartridge is pretty much designed for a certain range of bullet weights, bullet lengths, and then the corresponding correct amount of rifling twist, um, the, the twist rate, I should say, to stabilize bullets in that weight range or length, really. That's how it works, right? So, um, yes, I could load this 168 in my 300 PRC. It would be stabilized, but it would be overspun. Now, the take-home message is this. A sufficient amount of spin is required to stabilize a bullet. Too little and the bullet is not stabilized and it will fly kind of all over the place. Too much spin and what's going to happen is you're going to also see um, the precision of that round decrease or the dispersion increase. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at this little bit larger bullet, longer bullet for me to get, get my hands on. But every bullet has a center of gravity and a center of pressure. Those two points are not in the same place. Now, the center of gravity is static center of pressure is going to change based on the velocity of this bullet. The center of pressure will be forward of the center of gravity. As that center of pressure changes, the bullet uh, will have more of an ability to start wiggling all over the place, right? More on that really in the next episode, but um, that is really the reason underlying why a bullet can be overspun and result then in poor performance, poor dispersion, poor precision. In addition, any defects in that bullet are accentuated by being overspun and also then leading to a poor performance of that bullet. Make sense? Well, if you've got some follow-up questions or additional questions uh, on this video, go ahead and post those in the comments. As I said, we've got another video coming out all about bullets. We're going to be talking about all different sorts of bullets in our Extreme Reloading series. Thanks a bunch for watching. Until next time, take care.